Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, July 6th. Thank you for joining. Let's begin with prayer. Father God, we praise your name and we give all the glory to you. And we thank you for this opportunity to once again to get together to hear the message that you have for us and to apply your message into our lives. We love you, Father God, and we pray all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. We are in Psalm 31, 9 through 24, with titles such as God's Faithfulness Endures, Hope Will Find Us, Our Testimony of Victory, God Meets Us in Our Mess. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the other contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery, for I hear many whispering terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all, on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence you hide them from all human intrigues, and keep them safe in your dwelling from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. In 9 through 13, what we have going here is David is feeling worthless. However, he does trust in God to renew and restore him. God knows our struggles. He loves us continually and will bring us hope as we patiently wait for him. God is our comfort when everyone else abandons us. Go to God with all your struggles, no matter how big or small. God sees us when we're struggling. He sees us 24-7. He wants us to come to him, come to him with our struggles, come to him with our needs, come to him with our prayers, come to him with our requests. God is waiting for us. He wants to comfort us. He loves us and he will do whatever it takes to help us, to pull us out of our struggles. In 14 through 24, we have, but I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. David is acknowledging that his circumstances are under God's control. Our lives are in God's hands, not anyone else's. So don't be looking for others to comfort you. Go to God first. Of course, others can comfort us, but go to God first. Go to God first and be comforted. And you can also take that comfort out to others who know you are struggling. We are the children of a God who loves us, who is there for us 24-7. Be encouraged to trust in God in our own circumstances. It keeps us from making bad decisions while waiting on God to respond with our prayers. We don't need to take matters into our own hands, losing our patience with God's timing. And then we will come to know that God's timing is always perfect. David is hoping in God's faithfulness. He always has hope in God. He's trusting in God and his goodness. David is trusting in God's love and his timing. 
And you know, everything we read in the Bible is to teach us. So it teaches us to trust in God's timing. So do trust in God's timing. Be patient. Again, because we know God's answer will be much better than anything we ever would have expected. God has pulled David through many previous hopeless situations and David has confidence that he will do it again. And I'm sure we all have times when God pulled us through something. Reflect on those times. Remember, you thought, you know, it was the end, but God pulled us through it. And not necessarily in the way that we expected to be pulled through it, but again, God's plan God's will, God's timing is always perfect. In 16 and 17, we have, let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you, but let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Very similar to what Aaron said in Numbers, which was, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Both were praying for God to look on them, to smile on them, and to bless them. And we can go to God with the same request. Go to God, ask God to look on you, to look on you with favor, to shower you with his grace and mercy, to smile on you and to bless you. And we know that when we are blessed, then we be the blessing also. And also we are blessed first. So, you know, we, we go somewhere and someone blesses us. Pay back that blessing to someone, even if it's someone you don't know. Always be a blessing. Try to be a blessing. Use opportunities to be a blessing to someone. Life is uncertain. We have to acknowledge that God is in control. Let's just sit back and relax. Again, wait on God's timing. Humbly trust in him and his plan. God doesn't expect us to figure it out, sort it out, or put it together with our limited ability. But God can do it, and God will do it. Again, we just need to be patient. God just wants us to trust in him, to follow him, and to be obedient to him, to have confidence in who he is, in his power, and his, in his ability. He walks with us and he talks to us. So listen for his voice. Spend quiet time. Go to God and always praise God. When you go to God, praise him and thank him and then bring your request to him. Pray for open hearts and minds and ears to hear, to understand, and to obey. Always pray for wisdom. Always pray for discernment. Again, always praising God first and thanking him. We forget to thank God sometimes. You know, we ask for something, we get it, and then we're so happy and so excited that we got it that we forget to thank God. So always thank God. I'm sure I would think that each and every one of us, every day, something happens that we can go to God and thank him for it. Whether it be something good, something good happened to us, or something bad did not happen to us, we always have a reason to go to God in thankfulness. Go to God with your needs, your requests, but again, go to him in thankfulness and go to him for direction. Ask him, what do I do about this circumstance? How can I help to get out of this circumstance? Ask God for direction and he will give us that direction. He will lead us into the right spot because he has a plan. He has a will. He loves us. He wants to comfort us. He is faithful continually. He is always showering us with grace and mercy. So let's give back in thankfulness and share Jesus with others. We also give back in thankfulness by sharing Jesus with others and encouraging others to have a relationship with Jesus. So continually, continually go to God. Thank him for his son, Jesus, for taking our sin to the cross. Thank him for the Holy Spirit for dwelling in each and every one of us. Let's pray. Father God, we pray that each and every one of us take time out of our busy lives to come to you, to spend time with you, to seek your face, 
to go to you and praise you and give glory to you, to thank you for your faithfulness and your continual work in our lives, for loving us, Father God, even when we turn our backs on you. We thank you, Father God, that when we turn our backs on you, that you always bring us back. We love you, Father God, and we pray all this in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. God bless you, everyone. Have a week filled with blessings. Be a blessing to someone. Bye-bye.